Hey everyone, this is Kathy at North Star Prep Center in Minnesota. I just want to tell you, first of all, thank you so much for coming to my channel. But I recorded this entire video in a very windy situation and my sound was horrible. So I really, really apologize for having to do a voiceover in this, but I'm trying to give you the best information that I can with what I did. I know so many of you are really interested in how to build raised beds and there are many different ways to do it out there but I just want to show you the way that I do it. I love raised beds and the others that are in my garden I built about six years ago and they're starting to decay so I think next year I'm gonna to have to start replacing those but in this video I'm just going to show you how I put them together so that you can get the general idea for whatever size beds you want to build. Thanks for sticking with me in this video. I hope it is informative and will give you lots of ideas. Today I'm going to show you how I build my raised beds. I use just construction pine, not treated. They're 2x8s and 1x4s. Now these particular beds I'm doing are going to be 8 feet long and 1 feet wide. The other beds I have in my garden, I have two of them that are one by fours. I have three that are three by six. I have three that are four by six feet. And I have one that's two feet square. And that's the one that has comfrey in it. I don't claim to be a carpenter and a lot of my boards don't cut straight and they fit a little bit warped, but you know what? This is a garden and I don't expect straight or perfect in here at all. Let's get building some beds. Using 2x8 by 8 by eight foot length construction pine boards, I marked off 12 inch sections for the ends and then cut those with a circular saw. Now normally I would take the time to nicely sand all the edges and everything so that I don't get any splinters, but that would take me another hour or so and I just don't have that kind of time. I'm really under the gun because of the weather with the winter storm coming. Okay, I have my one foot board sections in between my eight foot sections and I'm going to screw them together on the ends with a number eight screw that's three inches long. This is another little trick I learned from Al at Lumna Acres. I'm using this clamp to help hold the boards together so that when I screw them in I can get a nice square and true corner that's not warped. So I've got the first layer of the first box done and I'm going to move it to the side so when I get the other one finished I can stack them. So some people prefer to do like a 2x2 two two in the corner of the bed so that they're hidden inside and there's nothing on the outside. And it's totally fine if that's what you prefer to do. I do have my little herb bed over there. It's that way because I have sections in it. And so I put two by twos right in between them. As you can see in my other beds, I have them on the outside because when I'm digging, planting, and tilling up, I don't want the interference with those little corners. So I'm totally good with them on the outside. To me, they're fine and they hold together well. So you can see I have these little corner braces that I make out of 1x4s. And then I don't have the wood inside here that's interfering with me and then rotting too. Okay now to build the corner braces I cut the 1x4s into 14 inch lengths. Now my beds are 15 inches high and I want the corners to be just a little bit lower than the edge of the beds so that I don't rack my hand against them and 
bump my elbow and things like that. So now I'm going to take number eight screws, they're only one and three quarter inches, and I'm going to connect two boards together at the corners. I'm going to start a couple of screws, just get them started so that they're all ready to go. And then I want to connect them in the corner, but it makes it a lot easier if you put some other blocks under there as a support to keep the corners straight. And then I can go ahead and finish screwing these in to the corners. Okay, my beds are all ready to go. I stacked them one on top of the other, and now they are ready for the corner braces. So now I will be putting the corners on, and I'll put two screws on the top and then two on the bottom on each side to attach them. There is a certain way that this brace has to be attached. You can see that this side is a little bit shorter than this one. So you want the shorter side to go on the outside of your beds and the longer one to go on the other side because when you start to screw them in you're not going to be hitting that seam you want to be able to have that strong panel. Okay, I started some screws to make it easier. Now because I cut the brace boards a little bit shorter than the height of the bed, I want to make sure that I center the boards between the top and the bottom. That way it won't interfere with the bottom when you're trying to lay the bed flat. Now because these beds are kind of moving around on me while I'm trying to secure it with the screws, I'm going to use the clamp again to hold it together and this worked great. Okay, I have the screws in the top and the bottom already secured, and now I'm going to add one more screw on either side here for the top and the bottoms. This is going to keep the 1x4s from warping as well as holding the top and the bottom beds tightly together. the beds in place now. I put a full length one on either end and the shorter one in the middle. It's only shorter by about two inches. But boy are those heavy. Oh my goodness, they were really hard to get into place. When winter comes early like this, it is so hard on me <laughs> because I'm by myself and trying to do all this stuff and it's a chore. I enjoy it. It's just when it's you know, a very limited time, like a day and a half. And I'm under the gun for this, and it makes it a little bit hard. And that is the basic construction of the raised beds that I build. They've worked well. So, you guys, take care, stay tuned, God bless, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.